Jared Polin. Fro knows photo dot com back here with another file for us and by us i mean greg and i to edit i chose this file this week because what we're looking for when it comes to editing editing these files are files that need some tweaks not the most perfect files in the world uh, with that said and you know like i say sometimes we get those really great photos and perfect raw files that there's really not much tweaking that's needed in this case I feel that there's something needed here because the firefighters should be the focus uh, instead of the fire. And what's probably going on here is the exposure, the the, the matrix exposure, or I mean, in this case, the cannon that's doing its 3D, whatever they call it, is reading off the fire because the fire looks pretty good, uh, nice and burning. And um, I'm hoping that this is a uh, test fire for a test house. I really don't know if this is a real fire or a test house fire. But anyway, it's taken with a Canon EOS 40D, 1 640th of a second at F4, ISO 400, 17 millimeters. That's the 17 to 40 F4. So let's let's get into this and see what we can do to this file. There's fill light. <laughs> and the first thing I did was hit fill light. But I usually, I like to do my exposure, but it's interesting. This may work with fill light because it doesn't take away too much. It brings back the firefighters. I am going to make it more yellow a little bit for now. Contrast, contrast. What's black and white look like? You know I love black and white. I love black and white a lot. So I'm going to stick with that for right now, but maybe I'll do two edits. I don't know, maybe Greg will do two edits also. So let's see where this started out. That's pretty cool. I like this. I love that. I love the way this black and white is looking right now. That's that's really uber duper sweetly looking cool in my mind. Let's see. Duplicate. Create virtual copy. Reset our settings. And here we go. Let's go with some color. And then, we'll, then I'll decide what I like, color or the black and white. So we're going to go up with the fill light because it's not taking away from the fire. Up with the contrast. Up my yellow. Ooh, sw gosh. Now what you're going to notice here is we start to get some noise. And it's not that terrible. I mean, yes, 400 ISO. But being that I've gone up, when I haven't gone too far in terms of stop. But I did raise my fill light, which is, you know brought out the subjects so let's see if we pull back on the fill light a little bit pull exposure no i don't want to lose the fire too much and we got that making it yellow contrast is going boom clarity's going up recovery that would bring the sky back but to me i'm also losing the fire yeah look what's happening in the fire with the re recovery i do not like that because you're meant to see that big fireball. Great ball of fire. Anyway, so there's the color. There's the black and white. There's the color. There's the black and white. Can you guess which one this is? Is this the color? Or Yeah. So, hmm. Toss up, right? I'm going to leave it with both right now. Actually, what I'm noticing in the fire here, we are now losing the fire. Let's see. Let's throw the recovery in. Now I said it. We see what happened in the in the color one. We lost everything in here. Well, it made it look mucky and weird. But in this case, by using the recovery, it is bringing the detail back into the fire and the sky without losing anything in the face here. There's really nothing being lost. Well, not that much. We're losing a little bit of contrast, it looks like. And you know I like my contrast to go boomify. Boom, 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 boom. But in that case, I can compensate. And I'm, I'm not, it, it didn't take a, enough away in my, there we go, there we go, there we go, and there we go. So, I've done the two edits, color, black and white, color, pretty cool. I like the journalistic style of the black and white laying there, picking it up, but I'll put up both today just so you can get a feel for it, and as always, we're going to let you start to edit this file, and you will find this file in the forum with a link 
to download the raw file, in this case a CR2 file from this Canon image. All right, Jared Poland, fro knows photo.com. See ya. Greg Cazillo, fro knows photo.com. Another raw edit day. Let's see how we do on this photo. Completely different. Love journalistic images like this. Uh, I think Jared something, said something about it being French and. Uh, by that right there, not that I know how to read other languages or anything, uh, looks like it very well may be French. So anyway, what a, just a really cool image. Love stuff like this. Anyway, let's see what we can do with it. Now, I like seeing the color of the fire, but there really isn't color anywhere else. And so the first thing I'm going to try is some black and white. And, man, I just really need to have that color, I guess. So I guess I'm going to go back and, and go back to color and see what we can do. So let's start off with a lot of contrast. Now, as you guys know, I like my contrast. So let's pump it up pretty far. And we're looking really, really good in here with a lot of contrast. I'm going to bring my blacks up a little farther and bring my contrast back down actually a little bit. And let's open up my brightness. A little so that we have a little bit of their faces in there now see that's looking better let's go back to import see how it just makes it pop you have a lot of those those strong strong blacks makes a big difference and I like it all right next thing I think our sky needs to be a little stronger a little bluer which we always like to see a nice blue sky so uh, go to our HSL panel and luminance and we will hit this little button thingy and we will drag this down a hair. Not a lot. Not a lot, just a little. Just to give it a little bit of a blue in there. Uh, just to help to keep your eyes back into the image. Because if there's a lighter color on the edges, your eyes have a tend to just keep on going right off the edge of the photo. That's not what we want to happen here. Um, let's see. Why is that staying on? There we go. Okay. Next thing. Let's add a, hmm, <laughs> we don't need any of that. Let's check our white balance. Yeah, see what a difference. It just warmed up the entire image when we went and adjusted our white balance. It was just really cold before, and I definitely like it a, a good bit warmer. It even accentuates the fire right there. And I think that makes a big difference. Last thing, my uh, standard strong contrast tone curve already there. Uh, it is a little on the noisy side, but I'm not really going to worry about it. Um, problem with the noise reduction is sometimes it removes a lot of detail. And we want to be able to see the detail in that fire right there. And so I'd really hate to remove that. You know, we love seeing all those little different uh those little different tones in the fire there so i'd hate to get rid of that so i think that is about it greg Cazillo, fro knows photo.com see ya and here we go again back jared here greg over there down in the bottom right hand corner as always and greg you now see that i did actually two edits this week to your one, not that it's a competition, but sometimes, you know, it feels good to try to do two edits, whether it's black and white or color, like the couple weeks back when you did yours. What do you What do you think of these? Well, I'm very surprised, Jared, that you use Phil Light. What's wrong? What yeah, happened? I know Phil Light. Phil Light is your boyfriend. P H I L. <laughs> I don't know. I've been I've been for some other people's files that aren't mine because, uh, you know, I'm trying to bring it back. I, I just feel that it was needed in this image because what when here when we're looking at this color one right here I felt that if I changed the exposure too much that I lost all the fire which I know you talked about trying to keep right yep yeah I, I, I kept mine dark because I really wanted to show the depth in the red and the really saturated fire because that to me is the point of it well but then if that was the point of it, it's kind of distracting that the firefighters aren't in expo any type of exposure that's proper, in my mind. Like, I, 
I wanted to see the firefighters and the fire. So so basically, let me just say this: in the in the black and white one, I feel that this image is more about the it's more photojournalistic about the firefighters. And then, oops, when we get back into this color one, it's more about the fire and the firefighters are there. So then we move into yours and you say what you think. Yeah, I, again, I'm I'm more about the fire and showing the fact that yeah, they're they're there, they're fighting a fire that I, I just uh, that was just the one thing that really popped to me was that fire. So that that's what made it for me. So do you feel that the two that I did are off base or they just work a little differently? They're a little differently. And if I was going to choose one, I'd choose the black and white. All right, for the photojournalistic aspect. Yes, one of the two of yours, absolutely. Yeah, I I like that. See, that's why I ended up doing two edits. It just felt right. I, it, you know, one was. It depends what it, the situation is going to be used in. Um, yeah, and I and I would have like if you used fill light on yours, I think it would have been more similar to what I created. Oh, yeah, I would agree. And you know, I, and I just felt like that photojournalistic aspect is more reminiscent of what I personally like to see or what I like to shoot. So. You know, I mean, it's, again, raw files can be edited any which way, depending on what they're needed to be used for, and that's why, again, it's art, and you guys can do whatever you want with the tweaks, and, and as always, you can also follow that link in the in this post, which will take you to the forum where the raw file is sitting, so that you can download it and tweak it, and then with while reading the directions, upload it to the forum, and let everybody see what your edits were. Yeah, Greg, what else do you have? Uh, that's about it. The only thing I probably would have should have edited, which I'm now seeing, is that tiny leaf there in the top center. Yeah, right here. Yeah, that bothers me. I should have edited that yeah, out. Yeah, I didn't notice it before, and I noticed it now. And yeah, I probably should have done the same thing, just taking that out. Cause that yeah, it's just a one quick little touch with the, with the spot right. removal yep. tool just to be gone. Because the one on the left I kind of like shows that they're underneath the tree, shows that they're in a shady area but that one tiny little spot there at the top now you know, that nothing you... nothing saying nothing against the photographer or the the image composition it's just one of those things you just shoot it as is and you just would edit that later what, what camera this is the eos 40d so what happened here i we can say this is that he he did for he did compose it without that leaf there and being that it's not a full uh viewfinder you know, what if, if it's 90%, 95%, whatever it is, when he takes that picture, or whoever, she, I don't remember who took it, but whoever took this picture really composed it properly, and then after they took the picture, that little piece was in there, because the they, you don't see it in the viewfinder. Yep, and you know what, while we're talking exposure and shooting, there's a couple things that I would bring up about this, this photo. Yeah. Uh, once again, this person was using uh, an exposure bias of minus two-thirds of a stop, but this time they were on aperture priority, which... Um, that's why that's why the people are underexposed. Exactly. That's exactly yeah, what's going on. I don't understand that. I don't... Where are they reading... Where are you guys reading that exposure compensation is something that you guys should always be using? I mean, that's something that we used with film a little bit. No, actually, I never did. Neither did I. I just, no, I never touched it because it was, if I needed to make the tweak, I would make the tweak. I would change the, the manual settings. Yep. And the other thing that's going on here is not only are you they using that aperture priority, which is fine, you know, some people don't like to shoot all manual with that exposure bias, then they're complicating it even more by using center weighted metering. Yeah. And that definitely makes for an underexposed foreground in this case but that's again a good reason why we have the raw file for learning and showing that it can be brought back um you know with a little bit of work but don't complicate everything with these exposure bias i don't i don't if you need to bump a stop you could bump your iso you could open up your aperture you could uh, drop your shutter speed there's a bunch of different things you can do instead of changing the exposure bias now this could be with the 40d an accidental thing greg with that you know, that uh, spin wheel on the back. They could have been trying to change their focusing area or something because, the not, you know, the Canon makes you spin that wheel and it could have changed the bias and they didn't realize it. Okay. 
It's well, definitely I, a possibility. I've never used it, so it, so I wouldn't know, but I'll take your word for it. Yeah, you take my word for it. So that's all I have to say. You have anything to say? No, that's it. All right. So for Gregory Cazillo, right? How about that, Greg? You like that? Uh, no, not this time. All right. So, Greg, thanks for being down there in the bottom right corner. Jared Poland, fro knows photo dot com. Don't use that exposure thing, Emma Bobber. See ya. Thanks.